One damp September morning, Mr. Braithwaite, the farmer, stumped grumpily out of the farmyard to the gate by the lane. His farm labourer had sprained his ankle, Mr. Peters had taken the children away for a holiday, and the farmer was short-handed, having to work twice as hard as usual. Sometimes he thought life just wasn't fair. With a long sigh, he tacked a notice to the gatepost. Casual labourer wanted, urgent. He stood back to examine it. Watch your gov! The farmer looked round in surprise at the perky cockney voice and saw a scruffy urchin grinning up at him. His jeans were held up with a wide pair of braces covered with badges and ended a good three inches above his cherry-red Dr. Martins. His face, curiously, was almost as red as his boots and from his back pocket dangled a useful-looking catapult. Hello, young man. What can I do for you, then? The grubby urchin sniffed and wiped the back of his hand across his nose before replying. Er, uh, you don't happen to know a geezer name of Braithwaite what's got a chance your arm round these here ports, do you? A uh, chance your arm? Chance your arm, gov. Foam. The light dawned. The farmer nodded. Uh, oh, yes, uh, that's me. Uh, I I'm him, uh, Mr. Braithwaite, Scudderbrook Farmer. Come about the job, have you? Somebody tell you in the village? Well, it's only casual employment, mind, and it's hard work, I warn you. Dicky Dirk, chirped the boy. <laughs> Meat and drink to me, Gav, innit? Clue me in. What is it? Scaring off the old fingers and toes, him? Mr. Braithwaite scratched his head. Her fingers and toes? Crows, Gav. Scarecrowing. Oh, it's harder than that, young man. It's mucking out work, mostly, in the stables and the cow shed. Round the old clock, Gav, all the ginger and Fred. Ah, <laughs> handsome, Gav, handsome. Lead me to it. Shaking his head and grinning to himself at the weird and wonderful language he was learning, Mr. Braithwaite pulled down the notice he'd just tacked up and set off back into the farmyard, the perky urchin whistling along at his heels. And you can stay in here for a week, he said a little later, showing the boy the caravan, while the folk who usually live here are away on holiday. And uh, make sure you leave your muddy boots and that spade outside the caravan of an evening, won't you? Me daisy roots and me old root grade outside the Olean stand. Got you, Mr. Braithwaite. Only the family that live here have left it all neat and tidy, see, and, uh, well, I want to see it looking just as Ollie and Stat. He checked himself. <laughs> now you've got me at it, too. I mean, just as spick and spam when they get back. Uh, no trouble, Mr. B. Good night, called the youngster, as the farmer made his way back across the yard to the farmhouse. Gazing round, the boy spotted the barn, and grinned as he ran over and hauled open the heavy wooden door. There, in the gloom, he saw the stiff figure of Wurzel Gummidge, and his grin widened as he prodded him with his boot. As for T were O were P whistle. As for U were L were K were I were M were G whistle. The scarecrow sat up, outraged, and stared at the intruder. Stop sulking. Who do you think you're talking to? I'll sulk as long as I like, so I will. Here, hang on a minute. Who teach thee to talk words of these? Oh, the crow man, Nunky. Who do you think? Nunky? Who you nunkling any road? Hey, he rang on again. I see the afore, and not I? Come close. The boy moved close. Come on, closer still. God dang me. If it isn't me long lost Neville, Pickles, Bulbell's Bramble. The young scarecrow nodded. What's your nunky? How's your belly off for robins? Wurzel Gummidge shook his head in disbelief. Pickles Bramble. Well, well, well. Old Wurzel's nearest living scarecrow relative. <laughs> Come here, Pickles, lad, and let me touch you. Ah, oh, me very own living twigs and straw. Why, last word I had of you, you'd emigrated and was living in a rag and boneyard down the Mile End Road. <laughs> in Bulgaria, weren't it? Now... Oh. London, Nunky. Ah, oh, well, same difference. So what are you doing in these here parts and pickles, eh? Well, I'm on my holidays, ain't I? In the country, ain't it? Ah, so you come to see your old Uncle Wurzel, eh? After all these years. I just goes to show how, how straw is thicker nor milk, ain't it? Ah, I never had no children of my own, went on Wurzel Gummidge mournfully. Not never having been wed. And me and Aunt Sally... If we'd had tied the knot, we was going to go out one rare old morning and pull ourselves a little turnip of our very own and bring it up like. And through good times and bad. Bad times, such as 
when it had its little childhood ailments like turnip blight and root crop scab. And good times, like giving it its first sheep dip bath and teaching it to chuck its first birthday cake at its own mum and dad. Only, that never a chance to happen, did it? He took out a filthy old handkerchief and blew his nose noisily to conceal his sadness. Still, never mind, eh? I ain't entirely alone in a cruel world, am I? Not so long as I got me little nephew. What you got to say to your old Uncle Wurzel, then? Pickle sneered and thrust the muddy spade at him aggressively. Here, get hold of this, you silly old bug-infested country bumpkin. Hey? Gasped Wurzel Gummidge, astounded. You heard, said Pickles menacingly. A nip across Sharpish to the Clark Gable and the Ginger and Fred and start mucking them out. Come on, double quick. You can't talk to your nearest and dearest as loves you most in all the world like that, Pickles, said Wurzel Gummidge, just as menacingly. What a bit. I'm here to me on a day, aren't I? So somebody else got to do the grafting, right? A hard edge crept into Wurzel Gummidge's voice as he replied. Yeah, well, that someone ain't me then, Neville, and that's for certain. Oh, yes, it is, insisted the Cockney. Any arg you find, and I'll let Mr. Bayfight sling you on the chimney sweep. His uncle looked puzzled. Chimney sweep? Compost deep. Ah, oh, no, 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 Pickles, said Wurzel Gummidge fearfully. Oh, no. No, you wouldn't do a terrible thing like that. No, not your old Uncle Wurzel. Oh, wouldn't I just? Get mutton out. Go on. Crestfall and the Scarecrow picked up a spade and trailed it towards the door. And if I was you, Nunty, I wouldn't go getting no ideas about nicking off down a village, warned the cocky youngster, hauling his catapult from the back pocket of his jeans and brandishing it menacingly under his uncle's nose. Because I clobbered that many villages with this on my way here. And put the word about that a barmy old tramp did it. Looked a bit like a ratty scarecrow, he did. So I reckon by now they're in a right two and eight. Sling a scarecrow on the bonfire, they would soon as look at it. Where's old Gummidge frown? Well, what did you do that for, Pickles? To keep you here grafting, of course. Now get mucky now. Later that day, as Mr. Braithwaite strolled across the farmyard, taking the air, his attention was caught by the sight of shovelful after shovelful of mucking out straw flying out of the open door of the cowshed. Some of it landed in a waiting wheelbarrow, and some of it didn't. But the farmer was impressed all the same by the workman's enthusiasm. He removed the briar pipe from his mouth and called out cheerfully, That's the spirit, young un. Get stuck in. You certainly earns your keep. Inside the cowshed, the words were like a cold hand reaching for Wurzel Gummidge's heart. Earns your keep? Love us leap? Compost deep, he muttered shoveling even more frantically than before. Night fell, and in the caravan a contented Pickles was tucking into his supper. Impressed by the amount of mucking out that had been done, and thinking that he'd done it, Mrs. Braithwaite had done him proud, with a whole chocolate cake, a pile of ginger biscuits, and a steaming pot of tea on a tray. There was a knock on the door. Here, yeah, who is it? demanded the young scarecrow. An exhausted Wurzel Gummidge staggered in. Ah. Uh, what is me, Neville? I, I mucked up that there at Clark Gable, like you said, and the Ginger and Fred, and, and now I'm ready for bed. <laughs> Being as though I'm, I'm a bit tired, like. So I, I wouldn't say no to a slice of that there chocolate cake and, and uh, happen a sup of that tea. The ragged urchin scowled at him. Here, this is my supper, Nunky. You gets your own grub. Eat my chocolate cake? Oh, blimey, you're heading straight for the castle and keep. Uh, no, 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 I ain't. I, I ain't really hungry anyways. I, I, I'll just get me head down and, and not bother you none. Not in here, you won't. Oh, I should go, go. You gets your head down in the barn. This is my holiday, Ollie and Stan. You're the mucker out. And you ding and dong. Huh? What's that, Neville? Ding and dong? Pong! shouted Pickles rudely. Go on, off it, skedaddle, scram. The older scarecrow shuffled out into the night quite cowed and peered enviously in through the lighted window to see Pickles demolishing the last of the chocolate cake. The next morning, after spending a miserable night in the cold, drafty barn, dripped on by the rain that penetrated the leaky roof and nibbled by mice, Wurzel Gummidge woke to the rich smell of breakfast and the sound of Mrs. Braithwaite knocking at the caravan door. Who is it? he heard his nephew call. Uh, it's breakfast. Mrs. Braithwaite replied. The scarecrow's mouth watered as she went on, 
Now, don't let it get cold. It's sausage and bacon and fried bread, and uh, I've done you a couple of eggs this morning. Oh, and some, Mrs. B. Oh, and uh, when you've finished, Mr. Braithwaite says, can you manage to fit in the pigsty this morning? My pleasure, Mrs. B, called Pickles. The farmer's wife set the tray down carefully outside the caravan door and went back into her kitchen. Wurzel Gummidge saw his chance and took it, tiptoeing across the yard and crawling on all fours up the steps to where the inviting tray lay waiting. The caravan door whipped open. Right, hands off, snarled Pickles, his nose an inch from his uncle's. You heard what Mrs. Braithwaite said. Pigsty cleaning for you this morning. Either that, or it's the foaming deep. Ah, uh, foaming deep, wavered the scarecrow. Compost deep, sneered Pickles, seizing the tray and slamming the door in Wurzel Gummidge's face. When he'd finished his breakfast, Pickles wandered into the pigsty, licking his lips and grinned with satisfaction at the sight of his uncle working flat out. Here, yeah, and uh, after you've finished this, he instructed, you can shoot across and clean out the Mickey Mouse. Wurzel Gummidge looked blank. A, a Mickey Mouse? Chicken house! Wurzel Gummidge staggered out into the field under the weight of the loaded wheelbarrow, with the urchin swaggering along at his heels. Uh, Pickles? He growled softly as a gleam crept into his eye. Yeah, what is it, Nucky? Like? The scarecrow set down the wheelbarrow and straightened up, staring away across the fields to where the lane led away from the farm towards the village. Aye, uh, it ain't nothing special, only I've been wondering, as though, if you're as dabbing on with that there catapult as he says here. Dabbing? said Pickles arrogantly. Well, oh, on the best of reason, I. Oh, I know you're good at hitting the bullseye when it's bending down, wheedled Wurzel Gummidge. But can you hit the moving target? Something like that over there. The younger scarecrow followed Wurzel Gummidge's pointing finger and spotted a tall black hat moving slowly along the far side of the hedge. Ha <laughs> ha! It's dead easy, he sniffed. Done on a cord, innit, Nunky? He whipped out his catapult, took aim, and with a perfect shot, set the crow man's hat fly. Wurzel Gummidge cackled and cavorted around the field in an exultant dance. Dang me! <laughs> oh, I've done it this time, young clever sticks, he gurgled. That's one act that you should never have knocked off. Now you have gone too far. With a slow, firm tread like the day of doom, the crow man strode over the field with his hat in his hand and his face like a thundercloud. The scarecrow looked round. He was alone. His nephew had fled. The smile faded from his face. Pickles! Dang it, never. Where you got to? Raising his hand, he found with horror, dangling from one twiggy finger, the catapult. Pickles had planted it on him. I, I, when it, it, it weren't me, your eminence, he gabbled as the crow man stood snorting before him. It weren't old Wurzel has done it, not no how. Old Wurzel wouldn't fire off no catapult at an iron mighty ship like yourself. Not never in a million years, your highness, and not even in a fortnight. The crow man held out his hand. Give that to me. Please, your lordliness, I beg your honest's pardon, moaned Wurzel Gummidge miserably as he handed over the incriminating weapon. Only I can't beg your pardon, can I, when it weren't me what done it in the first place? The crow man ignored him and stared slowly round the field with eyes like fire. Pickles, Bobels, Bramble, he commanded. Show yourself, immediately. A cowering, quivering Pickles crept out of a bramble bush and marched sullenly towards them. Who told you I was here? he demanded, trying to recover his cockiness. Anyhow, he's the one that's been nicked in possession of the offensive weapon. I'm clean, I am. You can't prove nothing. Prove? hissed the crow man angrily. Pickle stepped back, terrified by the force of the words. Prove? Have you been so long in that London scrapyard that you've forgotten who breathed life into you? I am the crow man. I don't need proof. I know. Then I hope you know who put me up to it, whimpered the boy. Indeed I do. The crow man turned to Wurzel Gummidge. But on this occasion, Wurzel, I am prepared to admit that there are extenuating circumstances. The scarecrow breathed an enormous sigh of relief. Oh, thank you, Your Honour. Uh, does that mean... Uh, as excuse many more mucking out, your highness. 
It does indeed, Wurzel, smiled the crow man. I didn't put you on this earth to be a mucker out. You're a scarecrow. Oh, I am, he agreed vehemently. I always said I was, and proud of it. Aunt Sally, she, she wouldn't marry no mucker out, sir. She's got a pride, same as what I have. Scarecrow, a ten acre field, I am. And you, young man, said the crowman with steel in his voice, are nothing more than an urban pigeon scarer. A nasty little gutter snipe. A creature of the city. And back there you will go. Now. Your holiday is over. I shall leave it to you, Wurzel, to escort Master Bramble out of this district with all speed. Wurzel Gummidge rubbed his twiggy hands with glee. The toe of his right boot twitched. Ah, uh, uh, certainly, Your Holiness, sir. Uh, with the greatest of pleasure, sir. As the crowman nodded, smiled, and walked away, the scarecrow advanced on his quivering nephew. Pickles, me darling little nephew, he grinned. Yes, Nucky? You are about to experience me owl's hoot on your nest of ants. The urchin frowned. Owl's hoot, Nucky? Nest of ants? Tore me boot, Neville, bellowed the scarecrow, breaking into a trot. On the seat of your pants, now! And he booted the fleeing youngster firmly on his bottom, again and again, across the field, down the lane, and out of sight. <laughs>